Well, guys, I hate to say it, but I think the season's just about over. Might get another ride or two in if we're lucky, but I think it's time to start thinking about storing the sleds. So, if you're looking for information on storing a snowmobile, this is the video for you. Hey there, snowmobilers. Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first year snowmobiling, I hope you had a great season. But I think it's just about over. So today's video is going out to a viewer, Bruce McGarvey. Now I've had this suggestion a couple of times over the years, but most recently it was Bruce who suggested a video about postseason storage. Bruce, that's an awesome idea. And this is actually a video I've been meaning to do for a couple of years, but the season just kind of comes to an end. And I can usually feel it. I don't know, do you guys feel this too? There's a certain day, and it's not even a warm day necessarily, but there's a day every year when, I don't know, the light is a little bit different or something and you just know that the season's coming to an end. So I'm shooting videos through the winter and then that day comes and I park the sleds and I just don't get to it. So I wanted to make sure that I did this year. And it's not just shooting a video either. There's been a couple of years where I didn't get around to my postseason prep properly. Well, that explains why we have to do a carb cleaning video. The weather just kind of changed on me. And before I know it, I'm thinking about the summer and getting the boats out. But it really is important, guys. This isn't something that you want to skip. So this year, I really wanted to spend some time digging into some of the manufacturer recommendations for storing a sled and do a real concise video that covers what you need to do and why. So let's take that one first. Why are these things so important? Good rule of thumb for you. Anything that you're not going to use for more than a month should have some kind of pre-storage prep. And I know there's going to be some guys out there that say, oh, I just dumped some fuel stabilizer in it and it's fine every year. So the problems that you run into by not storing your sled properly are cumulative. So it's not like you're going to start it up in the fall and it's going to explode, but it's going to have an effect over time if you don't store it properly. There's a few factors that make proper storage important. So you've got fuel breakdown. You've got temperature variations and humidity, which lead to condensation. You've got corrosion and you've got pests. What I'll do in this video is I'll break the sled down into its individual systems. So fuel system, body and chassis, cooling system, etc. Make sure that we're covering all our bases. All right, first up, body and chassis. So the first thing you want to do is give the sled a good wash front to back. And it's not just about making it look pretty, right? But you are, you know that, right? Um, first reason is that dirt is abrasive. So road salt, sand, grit, things like that on any moving parts in the sled, like your steering components, your idler wheels. As soon as you start riding that sled again, come winter, that's going to act like sandpaper. The other thing dirt does is it traps moisture. So that combined with road salt is going to speed up corrosion. Now power washers. If you're going to use a power washer on the sled, that's okay, just use it really carefully. And I actually did a whole video on this. One of my viewers actually brought it up. So sure, use it to knock some dirt off the tunnel or the skis or the track. Just be really careful. If you get in too close to things like bearings, you can power the grease out. It's really easy with a power washer to force that water into areas where it shouldn't be. So if you're gonna use one, just use it carefully. Okay, once the sled's all clean and dry, you wanna grease it. So grab your grease gun. If you don't have a grease gun, if you're gonna take care of your sled yourself, rather than have somebody store it for you, go and get a grease gun because you're gonna need one. So you wanna get a grease gun and you wanna get some low temperature grease. Then you wanna look your sled over front to back, find all of those grease fittings. So obviously they're gonna be a little bit different on every sled. Typically you're gonna have a couple underneath on your rear suspension. You may have some in the front suspension. If you've got a swing arm suspension, definitely you're gonna have a couple of grease fittings at the front. You may have some in your steering. Look in your manual, it might actually point out those locations. But go around and hit every one of them with some low temperature grease. All right, once everything's greased, then you wanna look at unpainted metal parts that might corrode, like the ball joints and tie rod ends in your front steering, and lubricate those so they don't corrode. So I use the XPS anti-corrosive lubricant. You can use anything that's got a moisture displacing property like WD-40 or rust check. Spray them down so they're not corroding over the summer. So now we've finished greasing and lubricating the sled, we can move on to the fuel system. Fuel system being anything from the gas tank down to the carburetors. The two things we're worried about here are condensation and fuel breakdown. And I talked about those two things in an earlier video I did about the fuel that I use. So when gasoline is refined, companies put additives in it. So things like detergents and primarily ethanol. Now, one of the problems with ethanol, it absorbs moisture. And I think some guys really think ethanol is evil and, and this is one of its properties that it gets exaggerated a little bit. So ethanol is not gonna seek out and draw moisture out of the air. But the layer at the top of your tank that interacts with the air, if you get condensation forming on the inside of your tank, 
then yeah, it can bind with that moisture and eventually you can get phase separation happening in that gasoline. So you'll end up with a layer of ethanol and water at the bottom of your tank. There's a couple of ways to deal with that. Some guys will drain the tank completely. Other guys will just leave gas in it, drain that gas out in the winter and put fresh gas in. The recommended approach, at least the one from my manufacturer, is to fill the tank. By filling the tank, you reduce the airspace. By reducing the airspace, you reduce the condensation. So go out, get yourself a fresh can of gas, not something that's been sitting around your garage all winter, and top your tank up. Now stop at the halfway point and add fuel stabilizer. So I use XPS fuel stabilizer. You can use whatever brand you want to use. Read the instructions. It'll tell you how much to add. Add it and then fill the rest of the tank. Another tip I got from my friend Dan is add that stabilizer early. So you don't have to wait until you're storing the sled. Put it in your last tank for the season. Then if you go for a short ride, you can run some of that fuel through the lines and anything that's in the system is stabilized. All right, once your fuel tank's taken care of, you can start thinking about the carburetors. Now, if you have a fuel injected sled, you don't have to worry about the little bit of fuel that might be left in the rail or in the injectors because it doesn't interact with the air. But if you have a carburetor, you do need to think about it. So one of the recommended approaches for a carburetor is to drain it for storage. Um, so if you watch my flooding video, we talked about the needle and seat and they can get gummed up and varnished and dirty. One of the big culprits for that is fuel sitting in that bowl or float chamber over the summer. So best way to drain it, if you're not taking it apart to clean it, there's a bolt on the bottom, undo it, drain the fuel out. Now I've had a couple of guys say to me they don't like to do that because they're worried about seals in the carburetor drying out. Now I don't know there isn't some vintage sled with a different type of seal, but if you're talking about a 90s era sled with a Makuni carburetor, they're just those fiber gaskets. There's a couple of O-rings, there's another one between the bowl and the carburetor they're not going to dry out. And if they do, it's not going to do any harm. If you're somebody that likes to clean your carbs every year or every other year, postseason is a great time to do that too. Then you put it back together and it's drained anyway. Obviously, there's a little bit of strategy here. So I'm going to go through these things in a particular order. But obviously, draining your carburetor or fogging your engine, which we're going to talk about in a minute, are things you want to leave until you don't need to run the sled anymore. All right, next up, cooling system. So if you've got a fan-cooled sled, not much to do. It's a good time to have a look at that belt for wear and tension. So if you can get your hands on a service manual or ask your dealer for the specs on your sled, basically that belt should be snug enough that you don't get slippage, but not so tight that you're putting additional strain on the bearings. If you've got a liquid-cooled sled, not a lot to do there either. I mean, have a look at the coolant, right, and top it up if it's low. That might be a good time to do a coolant flush, so your manufacturer will recommend changing the coolant periodically because it breaks down. Um, and I talked about that in fan-cooled versus liquid-cooled sleds. Then again, I don't want to spend days getting my sled ready for storage, so that might be something that I do through the summer or even when I get the sled out in the fall. Lubrication system. If you've got a four-stroke snowmobile, this is the time to change your oil and your filter. So the oil in a four-stroke will clean off things like carbon deposits and byproducts from combustion. That's why your oil gets dark over time. That acts as an abrasive. Obviously, it affects its lubricating properties. So when the season's over, change the oil. Now, a two-stroke sled obviously consumes its lubricating oil during operation, so there's nothing to change. But have a look at the reservoir, and I would top it up. Again, you're reducing the airspace in there, and you're cutting down on condensation. All right, next up is electrical system. Main thing there is if your sled has a battery. So really, the recommended approach, again, is to take the battery out of the sled for storage. So take it out, put a charge on it, make sure you got it topped up, and then store it in a cool, dry place through the summer. Some guys will leave them in the sled with a maintenance charge on them. I think it's better to take them out. The other thing you can do, so firstly, take any of the nuts and put them on the bolts through the leads on the sled so you don't lose them. And then you could take a little bit of like dielectric grease and coat the connections on the leads and the top of the battery. Then you're not getting corrosion through the summer. Next up is your suspension. Now, mostly I just worry about the rear suspension. But with the weight of the sled sitting, especially on the springs, over time, their ability to bounce back gets reduced. So wherever you can, get the weight of the sled off the suspension and onto the frame. Best way to do that is to get a stand, put it on the back of the sled, get the sled off the ground. If you don't have a stand, you can even use a piece of 2x4. The other concern is the track. So it's just like a flat tire sitting in one place all the time. If your track is on the ground with the weight of the sled, eventually it'll get deformed as well. So best practice, always get a stand and get the back of the sled off the ground. All right, next up, drive system. Main thing there to think about is your drive belt. So it's rubber just like your track. So if it's sitting in one position like this all summer, it's gonna take on that shape. So best practice, take your drive belt off, lay it down in the belly pan or sit it flat on a shelf. 
So once you got the belt off, I would start by cleaning the clutches before you put it away. You want to get belt dust and belt residue off the clutches. So I would start with an air compressor and just take a minute and blow any dust out of those clutches that you can. All right, once you blow the dust out, you want to wipe the clutches down. Some guys will use uh, brake cleaner for this. I've heard other guys use thinners. Uh, I use Bombardi pulley and flange cleaner. All right, once your clutches are clean, the next thing you wanna do to make sure they grip that belt well is just scuff the inside of the sheaves with something like a Scotch-Brite. The one thing you don't wanna do is spray any kind of lubricant on the inside of those clutches. In terms of your chain case, you should inspect the inside of the chain case and change the oil every year as well. Now you can do that as part of your postseason routine. I tend to do it when I get the sleds out and then I know I've got clean, fresh oil in there to start the season. All right, when everything else on the sled is done and you're finished running the engine, last thing you want to do is fog it. Now some sleds will have a fogging feature on them. Obviously you don't have to worry about those. But if you don't, then you should get yourself some fogging oil. Now the reason for that, fogging oil is a thicker consistency and it's meant to stick to the cylinder walls and pistons and internal parts of the motor. So the oil that's in there, especially because it's mixed with gas, will over time, gravity will pull it down off the cylinder walls and down into the crankcase. And then that exposed metal will slowly start to corrode. Then with that corrosion in there, once you start running the sled again, that corrosion can actually score cylinder walls, it can damage bearings. So fogging your engine is really an important step. Fogging an engine isn't hard or time consuming or particularly expensive. I think this stuff's usually under 10 bucks. Get yourself a can of fogging oil, warm your sled up, the one thing I'll point out, you want to make sure if you're not doing it outside, you're doing it right next to an open door because it's going to smoke like crazy. And yes, you should fog a fuel injected engine as well. So the first thing you want to do is warm the engine up, right? You should fog a warm engine. So start it up, let it run for a few minutes till you get it up to temperature, shut it down, take the air box off. With the air box off, you're going to restart the sled. It's going to sound a little bit different without the air box, but you're not going to hurt anything. Take your fogging oil, with the sled running, you're gonna spray it into one intake, if you have more than one. Really generous spray, like get a lot of fogging oil in there, switch to the other intake, spray that one too. You wanna keep spraying it in there until it really starts to smoke. All right, the fogging oil you buy may say on the label, spray it in there until you induce a stall. What you might find with some snowmobiles is that they don't stall. So if you've got a fair bit in there, it's gonna run a little bit rough, you're gonna see a lot of smoke, then you got a fair bit of fogging oil in there, then you can shut the sled off. Once you've fogged it through the intake and you've shut it down, pull your spark plugs out, spray a little bit more fogging oil down each hole, and turn the engine over a couple of times. There's two other approaches that guys use instead of fogging their engine. One is they start the sled every month. And the other one I've read is that they'll pull the cable on the oil pump so that it's full open and they'll run the sled for a couple of minutes. I guess those two approaches are better than nothing, but they're not a substitute for fogging the engine. Now I fogged my boat motor, but the sleds the first couple years I had them, I just ran them once a month. But then I was thinking about it, fogging oil is made to stick to the inside of the motor and keep it from corroding. Injector oil just isn't, so I started fogging the motor and I really think that's the best way to go. All right guys, once the rest of the sled is prepped, the last thing you wanna think about is keeping pests out. Now earlier this season, I did another video about outdoor storage and I talked a fair bit about keeping pests out of the machine. So it's not a bad idea to watch that video and read the comments too, because I had a, a couple of good suggestions about keeping pests out. In terms of the motor, the main thing you wanna do is block off the air intake and your exhaust. So anywhere where insects and mice can get in. Now, I wouldn't want to crawl into the exhaust of a two-stroke, but apparently mice and insects do. So, the two things that you can do there, you could use steel wool in both of those areas. So put it into your exhaust pipe, put it into any openings on the air intake, anywhere where insects and mice can get in there. If you don't want to use steel wool, the other thing you could use is an oily rag, and then you can spray the outside of the rag with an insect repellent. Now, obviously, if you block off your air intake or your exhaust, it's important that you remember you did that. So another tip for you, if you do that, write a note and stick it on the machine. All right, guys, over to you. Does that pretty much cover what you do when you store your sleds or do you have anything different as part of your postseason routine? Post something in the comments. All right, guys, I think that's it for another video. So if you liked it or you found it useful, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. If you haven't already, think about subscribing to the channel. Click that little bell icon, you get notified when I post a new video. All right, that's it. Until next time, I'm David Clark. So as always, thanks for taking the time to watch. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move I think of you and Anything that's not gonna be used for more than a month should have some kind of pre-storage sled.
So along with your... Next up, cooling sled. <laughs> okay, next up, cooling system. The two things we're worried about here are condensation and fuel breakdown. And I talked to... 